We're going to start this puppy up. Clear? Prop? And welcome back to building the Afforda plane. This week we have a nice surprise. Let's first review where we've been. Boy, we've made a lot of progress. We have the fuselage for the most part done. We have the wings built and we have most of uh, all of the tail feathers built. One thing we haven't done yet is we haven't rigged the wings so that'll be coming up. And the other two major areas we haven't touched on yet are the engine and the engine mount. We'll be doing that. And then the last big area is the covering, the fabric covering of the aircraft. We have the wings to do and the tail feathers to do. Well, we are honored with a visit from a good person, and thank you, Jim Farr, who is the chairman of the EAA Ultralight and LSA Advisory Committee. He came by to give us a hand and show us how to do some basic covering. So in this installment you're going to see the rudder cover. That's a good example of what it's going to take to do the entire plane. Now the materials we used are the extra lightweight fabric from polyfiber, trying to keep things light, and for the rudder we're going to use the Stewart systems now that, that's the glue. This is a water-based glue, so we don't have to worry about fumes. You'll notice we're not wearing any masks. And we will go step by step so you can see, especially there's a lot of us out there who have no idea of what it takes or what is involved with covering the components of an aircraft. I have been involved myself before, but I am no expert, and that's why Jim is here to show us. So this will be a good introductory lesson to put to rest any fears you may have out there of what it takes to do the covering. It's real easy when you know how to do it. So let's get started. One of the first steps is to make sure there are no sharp corners that the fabric can abrade on. We're using our Scotch-Brite wheels with a high-speed tool, dulling those sharp edges. Even the edges of the gussets can be smoothed a bit to preserve the life of the fabric. We will be adding patches later to reinforce and strengthen these edges. We are using the polyfiber lightweight uncertified fabric. It's just under two ounces a yard in weight. Comes in 72 inches width. And our first step is to cut a piece just large enough for one side of the rudder. One of the most important tools when doing this project is a good sharp pair of scissors. We did not have any, so often you will see Jim struggle with cutting. Now keep in mind he was just kind of in the neighborhood, so he was nice enough to allow me to put him to work and show us how he would cover something like this. So this was a nice treat. Notice we are cutting a second piece exactly the same size as the first, using the first piece as a template. Now we're creating a reinforcement patch out of the same fabric. We'll use this over 
each of the gussets at the corner. Here Jim is applying the first coating of the glue. This is called EcoBond and is part of the Stewart system family of chemicals. It is non-toxic. In fact, it is thinned with water. Water is the solvent. So this can be done inside of your house without causing too much problems as compared to the polyfiber system. So we can try both ways, but on the rudder we'll be continuing on with the Stewart systems. So we're taking it over just a little bit further here. Not go, try not to go past halfway, because that's where we'll, we'll wrap the wrap fabric it, around. Wrap it around. These patches, of course, offer protection against abrasion when the fabric is wrapped very tightly around the edges. If you're wondering why I'm not giving more of a step-by-step -step description of the process as it unfolds here, it's because I'm watching and learning too, occasionally giving a hand.
One technique to get the fabric to go around a curve nice and smoothly is to cut these slits every so often around the curve. Later we'll see another technique. Note that the glue is applied again through the fabric to reactivate the glue underneath and then smoothed off with a wet paper towel.
we have it here like this, and we then apply the fabric, and we, we get it up here like this, the painter's tape now becomes our cut line with our nice sharp scissors, and we can see that cut line, and you can go right along here, Okay. Right? Ah. And you can get a nice clean edge because even when you put the rip tape on, you can still see a little bit of the edge underneath, right? Mm -hmm. So this will get you a nice professional clean edge there. And you can take this, right, with the iron. We can iron it right up to that edge, right? Mm -hmm. Secure it down and do his trick with shrinking and pulling around like this, right? We don't have to do the snips. We can do this all the way around with the iron. I liked his technique. That was really good. But then this gives you your, your cut line. So you get that nice straight line that ends right here on the, on the high point of the tube. And now the second sheet of fabric is placed over the structure. The heat from the iron reactivates the dried glue and everything gets bonded together nicely. So as we come around the corner, we're putting tension on the fabric to stretch it, because under heat, the fabric will stretch. And we pull the wrinkles out by heating and pulling at the same time. And we have the blue tape underneath as our demarcation point. And that's where we want to iron to, to make sure that we pull the wrinkles out. And the glue ends at the tape, that's the yes, idea, right? correct. Okay. Glue ends at the tape. Okay. 
we just used the existing glue and started heating to adhere to that. And we will go back over it again to put glue through the fabric then to, to fully anchor it down. Okay. Let me say you have probably noticed that this was not really a detailed step-by-step -step procedure for covering. It was more of an overview so that you could see the tasks that are needed to be performed to cover your afford plane Notice that there wasn't anything that you couldn't do yourself short of finding a pair of really sharp scissors somewhere. Now, if you would prefer a much more detailed step-by-step -step procedure on covering the rest of the affordable plane components, be sure to let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, if I don't hear anything, then we'll proceed just with these general overviews like this. So I need to hear from you whether it would be more valuable to have a very detailed step-by-step -step for covering each component that needs to be covered of the Afforda plane. And there you have it. Now that's a good example of what it takes to cover the components of an aircraft with a covering. Now one step we did not show was the final shrinking of the fabric. That's where you take an iron and apply heat to both sides and that fabric becomes drum tight. We're going to do that later. So we have not covered the rest of the aircraft as of this filming. So we need to decide what you saw just now was the Stewart system uh, method of applying glue and then of course Eventually, we need to fill the weave prior to painting. And the Stewart system is a water-based system with all the chemicals, which is really nice, right? Working indoors, uh, you don't need the, you don't get the fumes, you don't need a mask, gloves, etc. The other very popular method of applying fabric is the polyfiber system, and that uses some really strong chemicals. Which, by the way, I love the aroma, but they are dangerous. You need to wear proper equipment to keep that from uh, damaging your insides. So if any of you have comments on which way to go, because we have not covered the rest of the aircraft, we can either continue with the Stewart Systems water-based glue and uh, uh, covering system, or go with the uh, polyfiber, which uses the stronger uh, chemicals. They're both very popular out there. But as of now, we're still deciding what system to use uh, as we go forward. So, until next time, everyone should be back to building and wait till you see what we have next week.